Welcome to the CTS Learning Series, Chapter 5, Testing a Non-OSS UOC Example, Video 3, Demonstration of a PCS Conformance Test. In this video, we will demonstrate how to construct a project configuration file for a PCS UOC, perform a successful conformance test, perform an unsuccessful conformance test, and suggest ways to troubleshoot common errors while testing a PCS UOC. As mentioned in Chapter 5, Video 1, we'll be testing BALSA's UOCs. This video in particular will test BALSA's PCS UOC called ATC, or Air Traffic Control. For more information about BALSA and how BALSA is organized, please consult the FACE Technical Standard, the Reference Implementation Guide, and the Software Suppliers Getting Started Guide. Let's open the project configuration list and make a new project configuration. Let's name it CTS Learning Series PCS Demonstration, and we'll save it in the CTS Learning Series directory. After clicking OK, we are presented with the Project Configuration Builder. For this video, we will be demonstrating the construction of the PCFG, but for more information about the options provided in the PCFG, please refer to Chapter 3, Video 4. Let's first select the base directory. I'm going to set the base directory as Home CTS User. Next, our segment is going to be PCS. BALSA's UOCs are all written in C++, so we will select C++ as our language. Our profile is going to be Safety Base, as that is the face profile the BALSA PCS UOC is written to, and what we configured the toolchain to test as well. Our partition is going to be POSIX, as our OS does not provide any of the RNC 653 APIs. Let's provide the location of our toolchain configuration file as well. Finally, the UOP name is used to identify the UOP. Let's enter CTS Learning Series PCS Example. In the Data Model tab, let's provide the shared data model location and the UOP supplied model location. BALSA's USM does not have entity uniqueness or observable uniqueness, so we can leave those options unchecked. In the UOP dropdown that was automatically populated, we must select ATC underscore manager, as that is our UOP's name. In the Gold Standard Libraries tab, let's provide the location of an empty folder. We will set this as Home CTS User GSLs. In the Object Libraries tab, we must then supply the include paths and the include files for the PCS UOC. As mentioned before, analyzing BALSA is out of scope for this video. However, each of the header files that the ATC UOC uses must be provided in order to check for conformance. The list of included header files and paths are listed on the screen. These paths and files must be set in their respective sections in the Project Configuration Builder. As mentioned in Chapter 1, Video 1, and Chapter 3, Video 2, there are two methods of testing UOCs for conformance, the target linker and the host linker methods. We will be using the target linker method. This means that we must provide object files that were compiled against the gold standard libraries. We don't have the object files yet, as we haven't generated the gold standard libraries or built BALSA against them. For now, we'll leave it blank. Continuing down, we are provided an option for providing factory functions. As mentioned in Chapter 1, Video 1, and Chapter 3, Video 4, factory functions are concrete implementations of methods that allow the CTS to test for implementations of the provided interfaces. The factory function header file is generated alongside the gold standard libraries. So before we can provide the factory function CPP file, we must generate the GSLs. For now, we'll leave this blank. Now, we select the interfaces that the ATC UOC uses. The ATC UOC implements the LCM initializable 
LCM configurable, and LCM stateful interfaces. The ATC UOC uses configuration services and health and fault monitoring or HMFM interface. The notes and project info tabs do not contribute to the project configuration validation or conformance testing, so we can ignore these tabs. We have intentionally left the target linker section and the factory function sections blank. To fill these sections in, let's generate the gold standard libraries by pressing the bookmark icon. After the generation finishes, let's take a closer look at what is generated. In the directory, we can see a list of libraries and a readme file. Let's look at the readme that was generated. The readme lists the valid GSLs that were generated, as well as the associated include directories that should be used to build objects to test with the CTS, including the files that were just generated. Let's take a closer look at those files. If we point to the GSL include directory, we can see the CTS factory functions header file and a face subdirectory. Let's open the CTS factory functions.hpp. Here, we can see the function signatures we must implement in order to be face conformant. These were generated based on the supplied options from the project configuration file. Let's exit this file and look at the face subdirectory. Here, we have the generated header files we must include while developing UOCs. How to use these files are out of scope for this video series, but it is important to understand that the GSL generation process generates these files as well. For now, what we're focused on is the libraries and factory function headers. BALSA was written to the FACE technical standard and correctly implements the interfaces required to be FACE conformant. If you download BALSA from the Open Group website, it already comes with the factory function implementation that is required to be written. We are going to write the factory function implementation ourselves. Let's do that now by opening a text editor and creating a file called ATC Factory Functions.cpp. Let's include the CTS Factory Functions HPP header file and the header file for the ATC UOC, which is where the ATC class is defined and implements each of the required functions. Then we'll copy and paste all of the required functions from the header to the source file and return a new instance of the ATC class for each function implementation. Now, the CTS may understand that the ATC UOC implements each of the required functions. Let's put the path to this factory functions CPP file in the project configuration builders factory functions option. Finally, we need to create our object files. BALSA has a build process that uses make. Although we are not going to analyze the build process, it is important to note that there are two ways of building BALSA, one to build for face conformance and one to build without face conformance. In our case, we are going to build the ATC UOC for conformance. When we build, BALSA detects the gold standard libraries to build against. BALSA contains configuration options to provide the path for the gold standard libraries. Before we build, we must make sure that the path is correct, or else BALSA won't be able to find the GSLs. Finally, we may enter our build command. Enter make-f makefile.conformance atc. BALSA will build and create an object file. The file extension for the object file will be .rel. Let's provide the newly created .rel file in the target linker section. We can now press the Test UOC Conformance button. The progress bar will fill up as the conformance tests are being performed. 
Just like the data model conformance testing we performed in Chapter 4, we are shown the conformance test result with the output file location at the bottom of the interface. It looks like we were successful in our test. In Chapter 5, Video 7, we will open the conformance test report and talk about the test results for non-OSS UOCs. Let's intentionally create an error by selecting an interface our PCS doesn't use. Let's select the Test UOC Conformance button and see what happens. It looks like we failed the test. It is important to keep track of the used and unused interfaces that your UOC provides in order to properly select it during the conformance process. Thank you for watching. In the next video, entitled Demonstration of a PSSS Conformance Test, we will demonstrate how to construct a project configuration file for a PSSS UOC, perform a successful conformance test on a PSSS UOC, and perform an unsuccessful conformance test on a PSSS UOC, and suggest ways to troubleshoot common errors while testing a PSSS UOC.